Hello and welcome to VTV. We have Mr. Jay Walder, Global CEO, Virgin Hyperloop One. Hi, Jay. How are you? I'm terrific. Thank you. Uh, so, when you look at the transportation system in India, what are the challenges and difficulties you think it need to overcome to, you know, make it a better sustainable model? Well, I think generally the the, the answer starts with the number of people, <laughs> and so really the the focus has to be on how we're providing efficient means of moving large numbers of people, whether that's in cities with metro systems, for example, and I know there are, there are major metro programs going on in, in many cities, or at, in the same way that we're looking at this to say, how do we make intercity travel quick and convenient and practical to be able to, to do that? Um, the focus around single occupancy vehicles, frankly, whether they are gas powered or <laughs> electric powered, can't be the answer for a country with as many people where the, the impetus is really for more and more people to move into cities and we have to find the way to be able to have the mobility in the city and we have to find the way to be able to have the connectivity between cities that we've never seen before. Your first project, which is the Pune Mumbai Hyperloop that we are talking about, you know, uh, when work has begun on it, what are the challenges you faced at the initial uh, level? You know, I think you're still putting things up together. The team is yet to come to India, right? You're setting up a team. So in the beginning, what are the challenges uh, you, have, you have been facing? So, so first off, I, I think it's a great example of the opportunity space for, for the country right now. If we look at, at Pune and Mumbai, they are literally 120 kilometers apart. That trip today is a, a three hour journey, and that's probably on a good day. Um, and we all know that it, that it gets a lot worse than that. Uh, the opportunity space is really to say, if you can bring this technology, Virgin Hyperloop One would change that trip from being three or four hours to being less than 30 minutes. And, and then you begin to say, how do you see the connectivity that's taking place between the cities and the region in, in a whole different way? And, and, and now you get to the point about your question as you're, as you're raising before. What does it take to be able to, to do this? One of the things that I think is, is a real benefit to what we're doing right now is that the technology allows us to, to largely stay along the alignment of the highway. So uh, land acquisition is always a difficult challenge on any project uh, like this. One of the advantages of staying along the highway is the land really has already been acquired. Um, and, and now we can begin to think about that and use that in a way that's more efficient, that's quicker, that's environmentally friendly to, be, to do this, whether it's to move people, which is the primary purpose, um, or also moving freight, which it, can, which it can do as well and take some of the burden off of the highway uh, and the other modes of, of transportation. Um, we have been designated as the official project proponent for this project. We're working through the details with the, the state government um, right now. Um, I actually believe that we can break ground before the end of the year, and I think that's incredibly exciting. Um, the first phase of what we're doing will be a 12-kilometer test track. And, and the reason for that is this is completely new technology. Um, we've built a test track in, the, in Nevada, in Las, near Las Vegas. Um, so we know the technology works, but now we want to do it to, to a distance of 12 kilometers to allow us to test all aspects of the technology, but importantly also to go through the regulatory and safety certification. Um, I hope you'll join me on one of the first rides, but you can't do that <laughs> until we have safety sure, certification. Sure. From, from the government. And I think that's one of the things that, that we've put in our plan to be able to work through and literally starting to work right now with the principal scientific advisor so that there's clarity about what we're doing. We can agree on the tests that we need to do um, and hopefully, um, touch wood, uh, going forward that we will be able to bring this forward in a way that everybody will say, wow. But there's a huge difference between Pune, Mumbai, and Nevada, right? In terms of the te technology-wise, also you guys are much ahead than India, what we are now. So if you have to do a comparison, what are the tweaking that you did here when you came here, you know, to per perhaps, um, you know, customize it to the Indian uh, needs, or we may say the Indian technology, or at level where we stand today? Well, I, I, first of all, I think that, that many of the aspects are still the same. Okay. So. Uh, we have to build the infrastructure. Uh, so let, let's think about what Hyperloop is. Hyperloop is a, is a 
super fast transportation system running uh, up to a thousand kilometers an hour uh, in a way that we have we have never seen before. Um, it runs through a vacuum tube, and and people will be in pods. Each pod will hold about 24 people, and um, so much of most of that infrastructure, frankly, is exactly the same whether it's in uh, India or or it's in Nevada. What makes it different? What makes it different are the, the pieces that, that are specific to the geography of, of the route, uh, the alignment that's there, um, the work that we're doing with the government around the regulatory process and the, and the safety process, and then the operational processes that, that we'll have as well. And uh, our goal for this is that this should be uh, simple, affordable, high volume, mm -hmm. To, to be able to do it, that, that everyone can access it, um, and that it will reshape the way we think about transportation. But, um, and, and many of those aspects are exactly the same uh, b between the two places. I think the beauty of doing this in India right now um, is, is two or threefold. First off, um, as, as we said, we, we know the population of India uh, supports yeah. infrastructure investment. There can't be a question about yeah. that. Um, the, the second thing is that, that uh, the need for people to be able to move around is, is clear in, in, yeah. in doing that. But third, I think there is a, a, a really a first mover advantage here mm. that creates an entire ecosystem sure. that, that comes out of this. I mean, we, we estimate, for example, that there are a million jobs yes. created yeah. as a yeah. result of this, not just because of the construction or the operation, but, the, but, but you're creating a whole supply chain. Yeah, true. And, and I think that's, that's really the exciting part of what's, of what's happening. I don't think the technology has to be very different between different places. Okay. I think what will happen here is I, I do believe that, that uh, Maharashtra will become a center of excellence for Hyperloop sure. and that much of the supply chain that for many other things India might look overseas to be able to get India actually will be the place that is creating that supply chain and selling it overseas. You spoke about affordability, you know. So how affordable will be the system? Because it's India and we know, I mean, uh, affordability is a huge factor that be, uh, always is taken into account. A as it should be. So uh, the point I'd make about this is that, that we are building this to be literally like a metro system for intercity travel. We want uh, many, many people to be using it, 150 million people in the corridor that we're, that we're talking about right now. Um, if you ask me, will it be uh, like a plane ticket? No, much less. Um, think of it like a rail ticket. Or a metro ticket? Uh, not a metro ticket, but a rail, I, I, ticket. But, but a rail ticket. Think okay. of it like a rail ticket. Think of it like a first class rail ticket sure. as, a, as a way to, to think about this. Um, but think about how different that is okay. than the way we've thought about plane travel so sure. far. True. Sure. You also talk about uh, either transporting freight or people, right? So will, will you develop both the mechanisms or uh, it, it will only be restricted to people right now at this point in time? Again, I think this is one of the beauties. And, and you, what you said, you said yeah. freight or people. Yeah. Um, I'm going to change that sure. if I can. Yeah. It's freight and people. Wow. <laughs> be, we should be able to do both. Okay. And, and, and so let's think about freight for a second. Um, oversimplifying, there are, there are really two types of freight and they're both clogging up our roads. Right. One part of freight is the things that are very heavy True. and they're in big trucks and rocks and other yeah. things. And we will never touch that. It's yeah. not meant for Hyperloop. Yeah. The, the second part of freight that I think is very relevant here is uh, lower weight, high value freight. Um, by some estimates, 3% uh, of the world's freight accounts for 30% of the world's value in, in the way we're moving goods around. That freight can be on Hyperloop. It's freight that is, that is time sensitive, that people want to be able to move quickly to, to do that. And we don't see any conflict at all. So Hyperloop is a series of individual pods. So you could be in pod one and I could be in pod three. Pod two could actually have freight in it. So how many pods it will have? Oh, have thousands of pods. Okay. And, and, and pods can go individually. Or be connected. Or be connected, but, yeah. but connected virtually. Okay. And, and the beauty of that is, and, and let's take this route, we have an option on this route to connect to the new airport that's being built outside of Mumbai. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, which, which would be brilliant. Yeah. And, and now you say, well, let's assume we have a, a, a 
group of six pods, yeah. it may be that the first four, four pods go all the way to Mumbai yeah. and the last two pods go off to the airport. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And you don't have to even slow down yeah. to do that. So, and you can carry your luggage also at the same time. And you time. can carry your luggage at the same time. And so yeah. we, we imagine, you know, one of the challenges of, of this type of system is that we're bound by our imagination. Sure. That we imagine things working in a caravan because they're connected physically. Mm -hmm. But in the way that we, sh we think about this today, we're not connected physically. Sure. Each pod is individual. And if they go individual places, that's fine. When they come from individual places, they will come back into a caravan as well. Um, so it's really taking advantage of what we know is the best of technology that's there, bringing it into an environment where it can have tremendous impact for, for people. Um, we do need to make sure it fits for the Indian environment. I think your, your point is incredibly well taken. Uh, but I believe it will do that. And, and that's what's so exciting about it. So you also told me that you're setting up your office in Mumbai now. So what kind of staff strength you're looking at? What kind of structure you're looking at, infrastructure for the office? So what we're doing now, we will have um, two functions that we really need to do simultaneously. First, we need to be able to bring the technology here. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one part of it. And when I think about the technology, I'm, I'm thinking about how we are bringing the, the pods, the propulsion yeah. systems, the yeah. battery systems, the control systems, all of that to India to be able to do it. The second part of what we need to do is literally building physical infrastructure on the ground, sure. right? So uh, we are in discussions and working with, with Indian construction companies on doing that, but we obviously have to bring this whole process together and manage this whole process. And that's the role that, that Virgin Hyperloop One has in this. We need to ensure that what's happening on the ground yeah. and what we're doing in the technology Our fit tandem, together yeah. hand in glove yeah. of, effectively in, in, in doing that. Um, so we're, we're setting up a team to, to do that. Um, uh, we're setting up to be on the ground here, working to do that. And we're also moving some people from LA, okay. uh, Los Angeles, where our headquarters uh, are, um, s sometimes in short-term intervals and sometimes in longer-term intervals, but to be here as they need to be here to facilitate this project. So this is your first project, but at uh, going forward, will we also see you connecting, say, Mumbai to Delhi or Delhi to Calcutta. So is that is there a vision in mind we have for that also? From your lips to God's ears, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> um, look, I, I think one of the things I love about, about India for this is that when you look at the layout of cities in India, so many cities, large cities, major, major metropolitan areas are less than 500 kilometers apart or between 500 kilometers and 1,000 kilometers mm -hmm. apart. Um, these trips actually are incredibly ineffective by air transport. Sure. They're frustrating by yeah. crowded roads. You mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. We have the opportunity to be able to do that. And I don't see any reason sure. why we wouldn't be doing that. When this project that we're mm -hmm. talking about and working on now in Mumbai to Pune, it came out of a global challenge that we ran uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. To be frank, mm -hmm. the best uh, or the most vigorous set of submissions sure. came from India. Sure. And I think we have a lot of opportunity. I'm really excited about it. Thank you so much, Jay. Thanks all for all your time. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you.